In a shocking turn of events, Clem FM is back for another series. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed hearing my own desperate voice ringing out in this empty, desolate house. This episode is titled, Sure, Octopuses Are Smart, but you know who's smarter? Me, that's who. The intelligence of many animals is often underestimated. This is not the case when it comes to the octopus. The way scientists talk about octopuses, you'd think that they were the unheralded geniuses of our time. But I'm here to tell you that there is another unheralded genius of our time that absolutely shits all over an octopus when it comes to having brains. The octopus shows a passable amount of intelligence that has only been studied recently because we ran out of animals with fewer legs to find things out about. On the plus side, this means that we're one step closer to knowing whether centipedes are indeed the aimless dunces that they appear to be, or if they are just playing dumb and are in fact the fiendish, Machiavellian shitbirds that I've long suspected and often accused them of being. But as intelligent as octopuses are, there is one being on this planet that I know of for sure that is definitely smarter than them. Me. If an octopus is smart, I'm Albert fucking Einstein. Before I go any further, I should state that I will be using octopuses when referencing these creatures in the plural, and will refrain from using octopi, which is used commonly in more ways than one, as I would not be stupid enough to apply a Latin suffix to what is clearly a Greek word. Octopodes would technically be a more correct pluralization, but it sounds dumber, and sounding smart is what I'm all about. Octopuses aren't idiots. That much is clear from witnessing their uncanny ability to control eight limbs at once, when coordinating half that number is difficult on the best of days. The reason these creatures have been mistaken for idiots in the past is their appearance. But trust me, they just look stupid. They're analogous to nerds, which is perhaps why many would choose not to sleep with one. Including the squid and cuttlefish, the octopus is part of the class deemed cephalopod, which means head feet. This is a great example of science's lack of imagination and willingness to hastily name things after giving them a cursory glance. Octopuses have created vast underwater cities out of coconut shells and trash. But I could have easily made my underwater city too, if I'd initially got all of their required permits, and hired a reliable building society without ties to the mob. Alas, my vision for Octopia never came to pass. An octopus can travel short distances on land, same as me, but the difference is that they look like deflated beach balls whilst doing so. Not exactly what I would call a smart look. The cephalopod has the ability to understand numbers. But can they count to 6,000? I can. It took me a whole day, and several attempts, but it was a worthwhile use of the time I was supposed to be using looking for employment. An octopus has not one but three hearts. Even so, the creature is still very reluctant to let you remove one of those hearts to sell on the black market as a natural remedy for impotence, even though two hearts should be more than enough hearts to have. Sadly, intelligence is not synonymous with generosity or compassion in the instance of this creature. And by this creature, I'm referring to the octopus, not to myself. That should have been quite clear. Octopuses in captivity have displayed some surprisingly crafty behaviour. But has one ever turned a toilet into a makeshift distillery and gotten trashed in its jail cell on rotten fruit wine, cackling at its own innovation between bouts of lonely and consolable howling? I doubt that. I doubt that very much. Many restaurants the world over serve octopus, which to me is such a ghastly waste of precious money, when you can go down to the beach and wait for the tide to trap an octopus in a rock pool for you to scoop out and eat fresh. Just be careful of the ones with blue rings, or any other kind of jewellery. There's a double standard when it comes to being smart. What some call intelligent in animals, they'll quickly take exception to in humans. When an octopus squirts ink to evade enemies, they get a standing ovation. But whenever I did it with my fountain pen to blind other students in the schoolyard who posed a potential threat, all I ever got was detention. And when an octopus covers itself in mollusk shells as a shield to ward off predators, we praise it for its ingenuity. 
But when I walk down the street wearing my bespoke body armour made of dangling shells, driftwood, and other flotsam I found on the beach, people look at me like I'm some kind of lunatic! In my research, I've realised that the name octopus isn't quite accurate. As each of the animal's limbs has a brain of its own, the octopus head is technically its ninth arm. When I took my findings to l'Institut Oconographique in Paris, along with the animal's new designation, the nonopus, it caused quite a stir. There was a lot of healthy debate, which ended in a unanimous decision to have me thrown into the Seine. Cephalopods use camouflage to blend into their surroundings, but rarely do they use this skill to become a one-man army, killing mercenaries in the jungle with nothing but their wits and a bowie knife. In fact, I've read countless studies and cannot find a single instance in which an octopus has even attempted to do this. Seems like a real wasted opportunity. The octopus's arms have the ability to taste what they are touching, which I see as more of a hindrance than anything. Think back to all of the many times you've stepped in dog shit barefoot in your life. Now imagine that you were also able to taste all of that dog shit. The octopus must curse the day its feet were ever given taste buds. Though adept at escaping from captivity, the octopus is often recaptured and rarely lasts more than a few hours on the lam. This is a lot less time than I've been able to rack up when being pursued by the authorities. My record was five straight days that time I hid inside a log in the bush and almost died of dehydration and a bacterial infection from attempting to drink a monitor lizard's saliva. So I won that contest, and in the process gained a dangerous fondness for the forbidden fruit that is freshly squeezed lizard spit. The octopus is a curious creature, and will approach divers in the wild to see what they're up to but they have never displayed any signs that they have learned anything from the divers that they've studied, like creating their own fashion line of cute little goggles, flippers, and wetsuits to wear. I've been studying the octopus for a long time. I have a season pass to the aquarium and go there every weekend to watch them for hours. They do all kinds of fascinating stuff. Interact with other marine life in curious and surprising ways, show a keen and perceptive awareness of their confines and seem to have established and maintained habitat sprawling relationships based on mutual benefit. But the one thing those octopuses can't do is leave the aquarium when it shuts at 5.30. Only I have the superior intellect to do that, though not all of the exits are clearly marked. It's taken us this long to understand the cephalopod's brand of intelligence because it's difficult to relate to something so alien. They would be a lot more relatable if their mouths and assholes weren't so close together as to be relatively indistinguishable, or at least if they had a set of teeth in uncomfortably close proximity to their anus, instead of a goddamn beak. That song Octopus's Garden was surprisingly insightful. It accurately depicted an octopus's tidy living area, and unequivocally showed us that Ringo Starr should have as little to do with Beatles records as both humanly and octopodally possible. I first became interested in the cephalopod when an octopus won me a bunch of money by predicting the correct outcome of a sporting match. But when I placed my trust and life savings in the creature, suddenly its supernatural talents had forsaken it. This might be unscientific to say, but I've really had it in for them ever since. The intelligence of a creature is difficult to measure. If animals could talk, it'd be a lot easier to work out. But I'm glad that they can't communicate with us in this way. Because regardless of an animal's level of intelligence, I bet a lot of them would tell us that they don't want to be eaten, and I for one would prefer not to hear that. I've only ever come across one octopus that might have been close to being as smart as me. We played a game of chess, and it was neck and neck for a while, but I won, due to forfeiture on the animal's part. I still don't know why that octopus just stopped playing when my king couldn't move anymore, but he must have been at least smart enough to recognise a superior being when he encountered one. I had the nightmare again. He is standing over me, but way above, like I'm in a deep pit, and he's smiling down at me with his shark's teeth. Then he asks if I have a shovel he can borrow. All I have to offer is the plastic spade I used to scoop up dog shit to throw over the neighbor's fence. He declines and gives me the finger. <laughs> 